Ladies, welcome to Esther's Preparation Room, the UK Rebirth Session. Today is May 20th, 2019, and we are so excited to be in the presence of God once again. You know, God said in his word that where two or three are gathered, there he will be in the midst of them. The only requirement is that we gather in his name. And I can promise you that there's more than two or three on this call in this prayer session. So we know that he's already here. So we're so excited about what God is going to do in this time of prayer. We thank God for the opportunity to come before him, to gather in the name of Jesus, to lift up his name and to say thank you, to intercede in the gap for the UK, for the nations, for ourselves and for our families. And so we just want to start by saying thank you to this mighty God. We want to start off with the time of thanksgiving. We want to just give him glory and praise. Let's just worship this Lord because he is the only one who is and who was and who reigns forevermore. I'm just going to read some verses from Job chapter 38, starting from verse 4 to 7. And also verse 12 to 13, it says, where were you? This is God speaking to Job. Where were you when I dug and laid the foundation of the earth? Explain it to me if you are acquainted with understanding. Who decided on the measurements? Surely you know that. Who stretched out a line to measure the dimensions? Upon what base was the foundation set? Or who laid the cornerstone? On the day when the stars of the morning broke out in song, and God's heavenly throng, elated, shouted along. In your short run of days, have you ever commanded the morning to begin or taught the sun to rise in its place under your watch has the early light ever taken hold of the earth by the edges and shaken the wicked loose oh sisters let's just thank god let's worship this one the lord the lord strong and mighty the, the one who laid the foundations of the earth the one who was and is to come the one who reigns forever let's just thank god because he holds the world in his hands he stretched forth the world he laid the foundation he measured it he measured its dimensions how much more how much more can we put in perspective the power of this god we serve let's just thank him let's just praise him we Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the one who stretched forth the foundations of the world. Father, we thank you. Let's worship God. Let's thank him for his faithfulness, for the inexpressible gift of Jesus. Oh, let's just thank God. Because we have a gift in Jesus, because through him we have our being. It says in him we live, we move, and we have our being. In him we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. Let's just thank God for the gift of Jesus. Because of him we have hope for tomorrow. Let's just praise his holy name. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. There is no one like you. We thank you, God. We thank you, Father. Oh, let's just thank God. You know, today's topic is on divine help. And we are praying and we are standing in the gap for the United Kingdom. And one of the things we have to understand, this is a promise, right? This is the word of God. And so we have confidence in him. It says in Revelation that the kingdoms of this world, are now the kingdom of the kingdoms of our Lord. So let's just thank God. We know what is already written. We have the spoilers alert. We know what is to come. We know that the kingdoms of this world, every single kingdom that this world reveres will become the kingdom of our God. Let's just thank God because we have complete victory in him. This is not something we have to worry about. His word has already said it and his word has already been set. He is faithful who promised. Let's just thank God because of him, we know who holds tomorrow. Because of him, we understand that the worlds were created by his hands and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Oh, let's just thank him. Let's just thank him. I love this passage in Job because it said he laid the foundations of the earth, 
Not only that, he commanded the morning and every single morning is on assignment. I want you to command this morning. If you're in the UK right now, you already know that it's, it's, it's daylight. It's light outside. Even though it's 5 a.m., you can see the sun already. You can see like the, the darkness disappearing. Why? Because the Lord has commanded it to appear. And not only that, the morning has assignment. It says in verse 13, under the watch of God, the early light has taken hold of the earth by the edges. For what purpose? To shake the wicked loose. So let's command our morning right now. Let's thank God and let's command our morning. Thank him that he has shaken the wicked loose, especially this week. As we go forth this week, we are commanding our week as well. Father, thank you that as the sun rises, Father, as the day sets, the wicked have been shaken from my path. I thank you, Father, that you have commanded morning so that the wicked can be shaken loose. Let's thank the Lord for his governance of the United Kingdom and for his divine protection. If he is able to measure the dimensions of the world, if he's able to shake the wicked loose from the earth, how much more can he govern a nation? How much more can he direct a people? How much more can he can, can he move on behalf of those who gather in his name? We are gathered here, sisters, in the name of God. We are gathered to stand in the gap for the UK. So let's thank God for his governance. It's not by accident that we are gathered here. It's, it's not, it's not um, by accident that today's topic is divine help. Let's cry out to him. Let's, let's thank him because he continues to govern the nations. He continues especially to govern the United Kingdom. Let's thank him for his divine protection. Let's praise him. If you have been listening to the news, you know that there was unprecedented victory in the country of Australia. A prime minister who it is, Literally, the headlines are saying that it was a miracle that a Christian prime minister was able to win elections. And he gave his, he started his victory speech exactly at midnight, the, the hour of governance. Let's thank God because he is moving. He is moving in, um, in the nations. He is moving. His word is true. His word is sure. Let's thank him. Let's thank him for the victories that he has given us all over the world. Let's thank God also for a great soul revival and harvest in the UK. Let's thank him in advance for it. Let's thank him because there will be an increased hunger in the UK. There's already been unprecedented news events and people are seeking truth. People are seeking the source of truth. People are seeking the true God. Let's thank him for a great soul revival and a harvest in the UK. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you are preeminent. Father, we thank you because you hold the world in your hands. Father, we thank you because you govern the affairs of men. Father, we thank you for the UK. Father, we thank you for the unprecedented soul revival that will, that will happen in the UK. We thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen. One of the things that we're going to be praying about today is on the topic of divine help. And one thing that we have to understand, if we want to understand how God helps people, how God helps those who are called by his name, we have to understand the nature of God. And the one thing we have to understand is that God cannot deny himself. He's not schizophrenic. He is not forgetful. He is not a man that he should lie. So anything he says, we can understand that that is his faithfulness. And this passage in Hebrews explains more the character of God. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 through 20, I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. It says, indeed, this is speaking to the promise that God specifically gave Abraham, right? But um, we can use it to pray, and we're going to use it to pray. We want to understand the nature of God because he cannot deny himself. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 through 20, it says, Indeed, men swear an oath by one greater than themselves, and with them in all disputes, the oath serves as confirmation of what has been said and is an end to the dispute. In the same way, 
God, in his desire to show to the heirs of promise, that's you and I, the unchangeable nature of his purpose, intervened and guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to him for refuge would have strong encouragement and indwelling strength to hold tightly to the hope set before us. This hope, this confident assurance we have as an anchor of the soul. Why? It cannot slip, it cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. It is a safe and steadfast hope that enters within the veil of the heavenly temple, that most holy place, which is the presence of God, where Jesus himself has entered in advance as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So there's a lot going on in this passage. And typically when we read this passage, it's talking about salvation. And salvation is an important part of God's divine help for us. That is the ultimate example of his divine help by rescuing us from eternal damnation and presenting us justified and righteous before God the Father. But I want you to understand that it's not just salvation alone that is anchored on the promise of Jesus. It says that we who have fled to him for refuge would have strong encouragement. What is the foundation of this encouragement? There's two important aspects of this, this hope, this encouragement, this, um, this refuge that we have. We have access. How do we have access? Why? Because he has promised and God has sworn an oath. And the authentication of that oath is that he has guaranteed it by his name. Right? And so God, when he swears something, when he promises something, it is done forever. So the promise of Jesus, we have to go back to what has been said. What is the contract? There was a contract before Jesus, which is the covenant that God established with the children of Israel. Literally every promise in the Old Testament we can lay claim to because it is what has been said. That's what verse 16 says. It is a confirmation of what has been said. So we can claim those promises because there was an original covenant with the children of Israel. However, Jesus came along and it says in Hebrews, and if we read further in Hebrews, it says that he negotiated better terms of the contract. He negotiated better terms of the covenant. And so it says that Jesus was able to, he, 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 there's, it says that there is now a new and life-given way. And because of Jesus, we have encouragement. Because of Jesus, we have assurance. And we know that this assurance cannot break. It cannot slip. It cannot be moved. And so what is that encouragement? We're going to look at certain um, Bible verses, and we're going to use this to pray. And we're going to pray about this, because when people talk about divine help, Typically, we talk about it in very nonspecific terms. You know, God will generally help us. But every promise that is in the Bible is something that we can claim today. It's something we can claim for ourselves this week. And that is what we're going to do. So continuing with the, um, with the Bible verses and the prayer points, let's thank God. Let's thank Jesus for his everlasting promise, right? And we're going to ask him to intercede on our behalf this week. It says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24 to 25, because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Another word for intercession is help. He moves to intervene. He instantly moves to intervene. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Father, we just thank you right now for your everlasting promise. We thank you that you continue to make intercession for us. 
Father, we thank you that you continue to intervene in our affairs. Father, you continue to intervene for the establishment of your purpose in our lives. Father, we thank you for your divine help. Father, we hold on to the hope of glory that we have in you because you can be trusted to keep your promise promise. Father, you have sworn. You have sworn an oath and you have promised. You have guaranteed every promise that we have in you. By your name, Father. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise your holy name. Father, we thank you that this week you will manifest your divine help on behalf of us. Father, on behalf of EPR. Father, on behalf of the UK. Father, we know that you are working behind the scenes. Manifest your glory in our lives this week. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us thank God for the firm foundation of his word and for his faithfulness. You know, one of the confidence that, the confidence really, the source of our confidence is that we can be sure that God can never act out of character. For other religions and for other faith traditions, right, there's usually some sort of um, continual negotiation. You know, there's continual sacrifice, there's continual um, alms that are given just to extract a promise, you know, um, and not even a guarantee, just a hope that, you know, their God or whatever will um, speak on their behalf or not even speak on their behalf, will not punish them for their for their sins. But God never acts out of character. His sacrifice was once and for all, right? And he continues to fulfill his word. In Psalm chapter 46, I want you to go back and read um, that entire chapter if you can, and we're going to be praying from it. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 and 2, it says that God is our shelter and our strength. When troubles seem near, God is nearer and he's ready to help. So why run and hide? No fear, no pacing, no biting fingernails. When the earth spins out of control, we are sure and fearless. When mountains crumble and the waters run wild, we are sure and fearless. Pray to God this week that he will make you sure and fearless, that he will give you a divine boldness like never before, that you will be able to walk with your head held high, that you will be able to walk and work under the shelter of his strength, that you will be able to know that he is ready to help. If we served a God who was not powerful, who did not lay the foundations of the world, then we would have cause to fear. But this is the God who has measured the earth, who has measured the heavens. This is the God who has who has promised that he is ready. Not only is he able, he is willing, he is ready to help. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that this week we will be sure and fearless. Father, the dreams that you have placed in our hearts, the assignments you have put in our hearts, Father, every word you have spoken, Father, we will be bold and we will be confident enough to walk out with surety and confidence. Father, without fear, Father, without apology of who we are, Father, we walk in the identity that we have in you. And Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are nearer. Father, you are so close, closer than closer than close to us. Father, you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. There is no reason why we should lack. There is no reason why we should be afraid. We thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You know, when other people help you, um, there might be a time delay. There might be um, some things that have to be put in place before that help is truly established. One of the hallmarks of divine help is instant establishment. When God arrives in a situation, there's, there's instant change. Um, and sometimes that is called a miracle because it's like the timetables are so accelerated that it defies human logic, right? And that's what I want us to pray this week. There are certain times that God will intervene in a situation. And in the Bible, we saw, we've seen this many times, that God will instantly change people's names, right? There are even Bible passages where he declares our land beautiful. Every land that was barren before, he says, no, change your name. You are now beautiful. You are Beulah. You are Hephzibah, right? There's a name change. There is a complete shift when God enters a situation. The key word is that instant establishment. 
And so we're going to pray for divine establishment this week, that God will manifest how he has already been at work. There are times that we don't, we, we, we're praying. I mean, there are prayer points that we've probably had for a really long time. Not understanding that God has been working behind the scenes. But when divine help has come, it says in the Old Testament, now is the set time to favor her. And that's what we're going to pray. In Psalm chapter 46, verse 5, it says the true God, the eternal God never sleeps and always resides in the city of joy. He makes it unstoppable and un unshakable. When the city awakens at dawn, the true God has already been at work. Oh, Father, we just pray that when we wake to this week, Father, when we go to work, when we pick up anything that you have given us, Father, when we, when we become stewards of anything you have given us this week, Father, reveal how you have already been at work. Father, we pray for that instant establishment. Father, we thank you that you never sleep. Father, we thank you that you have called our cities joyful. Father, I declare joy over my life this week. I declare joy over EPR this week. Father, I declare joy over the UK this week. Oh, Father, that we will awaken to see the handiwork of your power. Father, it is not by accident that you have shaken the wicked loose. Father, it is not by accident that we have been reading verses about morning, that we have been reading verses about the dawn. Father, I pray, even as we've gotten up this early hour, that you will reveal to us how you have been working behind the scenes, how you have instantly established us. Father, I thank you for connecting us to divine helpers, to destiny helpers. I thank you, Lord, for giving us the resources with which we can accomplish our assignment. Father, we thank you that this week will be one of divine establishment in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You know, as part of the process of divine establishment, there's a part that we have to play as well. So we're just going to pray for the discipline and the stillness and the perseverance to gaze on Jesus. We have to reverence him for what he is doing, what he has done, and what he is yet to do. In that same Psalm chapter 46, we're going to read the first part of verse 8 and verses 10 to 11. It says, come, gaze, fix your eyes on what the eternal can do. Be still, be calm, see and understand that I am the true God. I am honored among all the nations. I am honored all over the earth. You know the eternal. He is the commander of heavenly armies. He surrounds us and protects us. The true God of Jacob is our shelter close to his heart. We're just going to pray. This is not a, a, a passive, um, you know, just look to God and helplessness. No, this is, a, this is an active focus on the character of God, the nature of God, with the full understanding of what he can do. It says, understand that I am the true God. And so let's just pray. Father God, empower me this week to gaze on you like never before. Empower me this week to see you, to see your nature, to see your character, to see your handiwork. Father, to see the manifestation of your power like never before. Father, I thank you because you are the eternal. And Father, you are not limited. You are not limited at all. You are honored amongst all the nations because you deserve great honor. Father, we thank you because you are the commander of heavenly armies. You surround us and protect us. Father, we thank you that you are our shelter. Allow us, God, close to your heart this week to see what you are doing in our midst. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen part of understanding the divine help of god is understanding how to provoke divine help right so god in his infinite power god in his infinite wisdom when he steps in he instantly changes whatever situation is at hand and I want us to just read um, a few examples, right, um, from the Old Testament 
of how God trend, totally transformed a situation. We're going to be reading. We're going to be reading Psalm 115, verse 9 through 13. We're also going to be reading in 2 Chronicles, Psalm chapter 115, verse 9 to 13. <clears throat> it says, O Israel, this is a commandment. Trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priests, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. Why? The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel. He will bless the priests, the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. What I love about this passage is that any one of us can find ourselves within this Bible verse if we only trust the Lord. It speaks to the nations. It says, O Israel, trust the Lord. It speaks to the priests and the pastors and those who are over the spiritual lives of the nations, right? It also speaks to the people. So there's no one who's exempt from this blessing. There's no one who's exempt from being helped of the Lord. So part of provoking divine help is understanding that you are a candidate for divine help if you only trust the Lord if you only fear him, and if you understand his nature, that he is a helper and your shield. And that's going to feed into the next Bible passage that we're going to read. That's in 2 Chronicles chapter 14. And we're going to be reading from verse 11 to 12. And um, this was a man of God, um, Asa. He was praying to the Lord. Basically, um, some nations rose against the nation of Israel. Um, and in, in seeking the Lord, he cried out to God. And there are specific words that he used to provoke divine help. That's the attitude and that's the posture that we also are going to take this week as we pray for divine help. So Asa praying to the Lord upon hearing that armies had gathered against the armies of the Most High God, the, the children of Israel. He said, Eternal One, only you can help the powerless when they fight the powerful. So help us, eternal one, our true God, because we trust you and we are facing this innumerable army for the honor of your reputation. O oh, eternal one, you are our true God. Do not let mere mortals win in a battle against you. And just as Asa requested, it says in verse 12, the eternal defeated the Cushites on behalf of Judah, and the Cushites fled. In verse 13 and 14, it said, Asa and his men pursued the Cushites as far as Gera in southwestern Judah. So many of the Cushite army died such that they could not recover because they were decimated by the Eternal and his army. The Judean army was able to crush all the cities around Gera because the people of Gera feared the Eternal and the army plundered each city that they destroyed. So part of divine help is understanding that this God who helps us is a man of war. In several passages in the Old Testament, literally, God is called the commander of angel armies. He commands legions of angels. And so when it says that he is our helper and our shield, the, the imagery that should be invoked is a very fearsome one for the enemies of God, right? It says that he is our helper and our shield. And when Asa cried out to God, part of provoking divine help is asking for help, is vocalizing that we trust God. And part of how God helps us is that he arises to defend his reputation. The honor of his reputation is at stake. And what Asa did, he did not say, do not let mere mortals win against me, Asa. Do not let mere mortals win against Israel. He said, do not let mere mortals win against you. You are the eternal. You are the almighty God. The odds don't matter when you come into the equation. 
only you can help us. We trust you. We have confidence in you. Father God, defend your reputation amongst the nations. And that's what we're going to pray. We're going to pray just a few prayer points. Um, and we're going to pray. Being a, a recipient of divine help, as we said, one, is based on your understanding that you are a candidate if you only trust and fear the Lord. It's also dependent on our posture and our complete trust in his power, right? And so we need a, a certain level of boldness to declare confidently, Father, you are my helper. You are my shield. And so we're going to pray, oh Lord, empower us to be ambassadors of your reputation. Asa, all he did was, listen, I want to be a, a signpost for your glory in this generation. There are a group of nations that are battling against the reputation of the Most High God. Father, defend yourself. That's what we're going to pray. Let your church, Father, shine as a light in the UK. In Isaiah chapter 26, and we're shifting gears now to intercede on behalf of the nations. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8, it says, Lord, we are living the way your laws command us to live, and we are waiting for you to act. We want your honor and your fame to be known. In another um, interpretation of that verse, it says, your repu the reputation of your name is the desire of our hearts and the desire of our souls. Let's pray for the UK. This is time to in intercede. Father, Lord, only you can help the powerless when they fight the powerful. Father, everything contending against the gospel, everything contending against the church, Father, everything contending against the kingdom of God, for the honor of your reputation, God. Father, we are waiting for you to act. We know and we are confident that you are our helper and our shield. We know and we are confident that mere model, mortals cannot win a battle against you. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you that there is precedence. We thank you that you decimated armies as commander of angel armies. You decimated those who sought to fight against the Most High God. And so, Father, we take authority right now in the name of Jesus against anything that is contending against the Word of God, anything that is contending against the truth of God, anything contending against the kingdom of God, Lord, in the UK. Father, let your church emerge as victorious. Father, let your church emerge as victorious in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. It does not matter the size of the opposition. Father, it does not matter the size of, Father, everything on the agenda against the word of God in the UK. We thank you because your honor and your fame will be known. Father, we thank you that there will be a great soul revival. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Again, um, you know, as we've talked about, part of understanding divine help and part of provoking divine help is by thoroughly understanding God's nature and God's character. And so the prayer point is that, Lord, in the UK, Lord, wherever you are, if you happen to be in the United States, if you happen to be in another country, pray on behalf of the UK as well as your country. Help us to understand your nature. Help us to understand your supremacy. Help us to understand your plans. Father, manifest your glory in our midst and in our nation like never before. We're going to be praying from Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24 to 25. It says the eternal, the commander of heavenly armies makes this pledge. The eternal one says, things will happen as I plan. Things will be as I determine. I will break a serious hold on my land. On mountain after mountain, I will trample over them. Then my people will no longer have to bow beneath the Assyrian yoke or bear up under its heavy burden. Just to set the stage, Assyria was a kingdom that had a long history of battle against Israel. But God completely and totally and very, very confidently with a great show of power, destroyed Assyria's hold. And this is the promise. 
as we, as we learn from Hebrews, every covenant, everything that has been spoken of before, we can claim it as children of God. And so the eternal one is promising that mountain after mountain, if you've been with EPR, we've prayed extensively for the seven cultural mountains, for the mountain of education, entertainment, family, business, all seven mountains of culture. So we're going to pray over every mountain of influence in the UK that the plan of God will emerge, that the plan of God will be the order of the day. Part of divine health is establishing order. Part of divine health is restoration and complete order. So we're going to pray that the kingdom of God, the people of God, the nations of this world will no longer have to bow between this beneath the Assyrian yoke. Assyria is anything that is contrary to the word of God, anything that is contrary to the rulership of the king of heaven, to the, uh, anything that is contrary to what God wants to happen. And so we're going to pray, Father, manifest your glory in our midst. Father, from mountain to mountain, Father, for every mountain of influence, every mountain of culture, Father, we thank you that you are the commander of heavenly armies. We thank you that your supremacy will rule. Father, we thank you that your plans will rule. Father, we thank you that things will be as you determine. We break every hold of Assyria on your land. Father, we break every hold of Assyria over the UK. Father, over the, over the government, over the mountain of education. Father, over families. Father, over the church. Father, over communities of faith that profess Jesus Christ. Father, we pray over social institutions, over government institutions, every hold of Assyria. Father, we break it completely in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for your divine help. We ask you for your divine help. Father, come and intervene. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your people will no longer have to bow beneath the Assyrian yoke. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're also going to pray. Something just caught my attention. We're going to pray against every heavy burden, right? There's, there's a two-part prayer to that promise. It says, my people will no longer have to bow or bear up under the heavy burden. So we're going to lift up every, every heavy heart, every bowed head, every burden that the children of God are facing, every burden that the government of the UK is bearing right now, everything that Assyria, everything that represents us. Syria has tried to place every burden that Assyria has tried to place. We're going to pray right now against it. Father, lift up every heavy burden. Lift up every heavy burden in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you lift up every heavy burden. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Part of divine help, um, as we talked about, is understanding the nature and the character of God. As we just read, God has a plan and God has a timetable. We know from the book of Daniel, um, specifically, there, there, um, there's a, a specific verse that says that um, Satan will try to shift timetables, right? He will try to shift the appointed times. So there are times that have been appointed by heaven. There are divine timetables. As children of God, right, we have to operate under a certain level of anointing where we understand and discern the times appropriately. What happened in Australia was very specific. Um, there was, a, there was a, a, a huge call to prayer um, during the elections and before the elections. Men and women of God from all over rose and they determined to fast and pray because they knew that it was a critical hour. Such is the same in the UK. And that is why these UK prayers are so important. We have to understand the times and the seasons according to the Issachar anointing that God has um, bestowed upon us. And so we're going to pray that God will grant us the wisdom and the knowledge to discern the times appropriately. Part of asking for divine help is knowing specifically how to cry out, how critically to cry out, with what urgency, with what boldness, with what, you know, um, with what specificity and with what mantle we should carry as we cry out. 
And so we want to pray that God will reveal his plan for the UK to us so that we can know specifically how to pray, how to precisely pray. We're going to pray that God will allow us to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit so that we can pray with authority and we can pray in alignment with the will of God and the timetables that have been set forth by heaven. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 26 to 27 says, Because I, God of earth and heaven, have devised a plan for the whole earth, I have reached out and I am ready to effect change among the nations. Amen. Who can argue with that or stand in God's way? The eternal, the commander of heavenly armies has determined that this is how it should be. And so it will be. Let's pray. Let's pray, first of all, that God will reveal the plan for the UK to us. As you know, there's so much going right now um, on global platforms there. And as we know, the UK is critical to what is happening in Europe and what will happen in Europe. There's no doubt about it. So we're going to pray. Let's pray specifically that God will reveal the plan for the UK to us to men and women of God who profess the name of Christ, that his plan will be revealed. So let's pray for revelation. Father, we pray for your divine help. Father, reveal to us your plan for the UK. Father, reveal to us exactly what you are doing in this season. Reveal to us exactly what you want us to pray about. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, you are raising men and women intercessors. Father, you are raising Esther's. Father, you are raising um, just priests. Father, you are raising people who will finance the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you that you have put a burden upon the hearts of men and women in the UK. Father, you are orchestrating behind the scenes. Father, you are setting up key players. Father, reveal to us the bigger picture so that we will pray and we will walk in alignment with you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that this is the hour and the season where the word of God is stronger than never before. Father, we thank you that the word is advancing like never before. Father, we thank you for open doors. Reveal your plan of the UK to us, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, even as plans proceed, on the global stage, that, Father, you reveal your plan to the the men and women who profess the name of Christ, Lord. Father, that you situate them in corridors of power so that they will be able to walk according to your purpose, Lord, and they will be able to bring your plans to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Part of that is that we're going to pray, as we've been praying in EPR, that we will walk according to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. As we know from Isaiah chapter 11, right, that there's a sevenfold spirit of God. And that is important for us in terms of understanding what God is saying and what God is doing, right? We're going to pray for the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, right? And the reason why all of this is important is so that we will not judge by appearances, right? We will not make decisions based on popular opinion. We will not speak in the name of justice, but speak amiss, right? The, the key, the, the reason for the fullness of the Holy Spirit is so that we can enact the judgments of God, now, and, and that is what we're going to pray about. Father, allow us, God, empower us. Father, commission us, empower us to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. That, Father, we will move with understanding, Lord. Father, we will move according to the fear of the Lord. Father, that your counsel and your might will be with us. Father, that those who judge on behalf of the UK, that, Father, they will walk according to your precepts. Father, that they will not judge by appearance. They will not make decisions based on hearsay. Father, they will make fair decisions. That, Father, they will not be exploited or manipulated by popular opinion. Father, that they will not, they will not bow to the wicked, Lord. Father, that they, they, will, they will walk according to your mandate, Lord. Father, we thank you for your mandate, Lord, for the mandate of the move of God. Father, that as we walk in authority, Father, that we will walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And Father, 
that we will be able to partner with you. You are ready to affect change among the nations. We thank you for that. Father, we cry out for help, Lord. Effect change in the UK. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And finally, we're going to pray. Um, we're going to pray for authority and alignment. There are many Christ-centered communities in the UK. Quite frankly, as we prayed before, we need the church, the capital C church, to accurately reflect God, to accurately reflect what God is saying in this season, what God is saying in this hour. Let's pray for authority and alignment, for unity and power, that the church, the capital C church, will walk in authority and alignment with the will of God, and that we will be able to pray concerning the timetables that have been set forth by heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for your divine help. Father, we pray for your divine help. Father, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us be in alignment. Father, we pray for the church, the church in England. Father, the church, the remnant. Father, those who profess the name of Christ. The Father, the church will walk in its authority. Father, that we will partner with you to effect change among the nations. Father, we thank you that no one will stand in your way. Father, we thank you, Lord, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Father, we thank you for your determination. You have determined, you have set forth in motion your plans. Father, we pray that your church will be in alignment. Father, that we will walk in your authority. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that your nature does not change. You are our helper and our shield. You are the commander of heavenly armies. You have spoken. You have promised. You have guaranteed it with your oath. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your divine help. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Ladies, thank you so much for um, joining us. We just want to invite you to continue to join us. This has been the EPR UK Rebirth Prayers. Um, we understand that it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to wake up, um, <laughs> to set an alarm, to wake up, to remain awake, to pray, to stand in the gap. There are so many people on this call today. It's amazing. Thank God for you. And we know and we are confident that every prayer, every time invested, um, is, has eternal consequence. It will make an eternal difference. Please continue to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we just say thank you. God bless you. I'm just going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you so much, Chichi. Can you hear me?